uh, as it stands right now because uh, PVC collection was a major problem in 2014, 2015, prior to the general election. So there are a huge number of PVC waiting for uh, would-be voters to, co to go and collect them. Do you, what are your fears ahead of this 2019 as regarding um, the rate of uh, registration and vote uh, PVC collection? Yeah, I, I think I'm quite, uh, initially I was a bit worried, um, maybe late last year, uh, when we had just over 3 million people registered. But when you look at it now, it has gone in excess of 8 million, as far as I'm aware. And um, it's increasing, it keeps increasing. So I think um, it's encouraging, though there have been challenges and people have complained of some of, you know, some issues when they go to register, delays and all of that. But the point is that the register is growing and people are getting registered. And that is encouraging. The other very encouraging thing is that the PVC collection is early. If you remember in 2015 general elections, PVCs came out very close to the election. In fact, about over 2 million PVCs were never printed before the 2015 elections. But in this case, we have over 4 million PVCs, including transfers and uh, replacements, that are ready nine months to the election. And I mean, those, this first set of people really don't have any reason to say, I've not collected my PVC. And from what we have been informed, um, you know, through the public statements of the Electoral Commission, we're expecting that even before the uh, good time before the election, the remaining PVCs will be available for others that registered in 2018. And I think that is a very big difference from what we had in 2015. And remember that despite this issue, in 2015, we still had parts of the country, both in the north and in the south, that had 80%, 90% PVC collection rate, despite the collection was very close to the election. But this time, we have many months ahead. I, I think we are going to have massively high collection rates. I am expecting collection rates between 90 and 95 to 100% in some areas where well, you can't have 100, but maybe you can, but I mean, at least 95, 98% because it's starting early. The enthusiasm is there. Um, the ease of collection of the cards is there. And um, I don't see anything that will prevent people from collecting their cards at the moment. I see uh, a, a reflection of um, the situation in Ekiti and Oshu, uh, perhaps because of the election. In the, in the cases of uh, replacement requests and transfer requests, they seem to have some huge number, isn't it? Yes, you know, Ekiti and Oshu um, had a CVR that was conducted this year between 11th of um, April and 16th of April. You know, whenever there's going to be a governorship election, what INEC does is to encourage more people to get involved. It will decentralize the registration process, and it will take it from the LGA level, where it is going on nationwide and some of the other approved centers, to the ward level. So in the case of, for example, EKT, where you have 16 local governments, you are moving from 16 LGAs and a few other centers to 177 wards. And the same was done also in Oshun. So with this combination, the essence is to assist more people to get on the register. But as you are aware, this was done in April 2018, whereas the PVCs that were, have been made available as of the 21st of, um, of, of, of May this year, which is just this week, Monday, are the PVCs from 2017. That is those that registered in 2017. So the uh, CVR that was de decentralized in Equity and Oshun, which took place in April this year, 11th to 16th of April, uh, will still be made available you know, for, for collection. So that is also important. And you know, as you said, in terms of transfer, in terms of replacement, even fresh registration, there was a massive uh, uh, inflow of, of that. And, and I think um, the, the, the figures for that are actually already available, but um, I'm sure in due course, uh, INEC will announce in Ekiti Anoshun about, about that because they did their CVR just uh, um, a right. month ago. Uh, Mr. Jijala, if you look at what exactly is happening, from the collection rate of the permanent voter card and the voting patterns that we've seen in Nigeria over the last five or four election cycle, do you see a possibility of a swing or a change in the voting pattern? 
Yes, it is very, very clear. And um, if, you, if you want to look at the voter turnout, for example, it is very clear that there are some trends. You see, many times, uh, many of our politicians may not understand there's a direct correlation between rate of reg registration and, you know, eventual success in an election. And, and I'll give you a, a little example. In the U.S. in 2008, Obama was able to bring out over 5 million additional young people under 20 to come and register and then to vote. And that helped him to swing it. So registration is very, very important. If you look at 2015 general election, the voter turnout for geopolitical zone, we had 37% in the southwest, 59% in the south-south, 41% in the southeast, 45% in the north central, 45% in the northeast, and 54% in the northwest. So you can see that the south-south had the highest, but then followed by the northwest, and the northeast and the north central and because those areas also have larger vo uh, voter population that was able to you know help you know i mean to uh, give us you know an understanding of how some of the results play out because if you look at, at uh, uh, if, if i may quickly I ask you this if, if, if from from the figures okay from the figures that uh, that you uh, you've researched on uh, and uh, the 10 top states with the highest TVR registrations in 2017. We have the five big states in terms of voting population. And out of them, we have about four of them here, talking about Lagos, Rivers, um, Kano. Uh, we don't have Bauchi here. And those are the five um, some of the five states with the highest figure. From what we're seeing here, uh, and the, the turnout of uh, registration, the voter registration, uh, what, is the, what are the possibilities? Uh, do you think that, that there might be some changes in figures of uh, voter in some of the states? It's very clear. The way the trend is going now, if you look at it, I mean, let us be very sincere and very frank with ourselves. In 2014 to 15, in the build-up to the 2015 elections, there was a great uh, interest by, um, let me say, um, from more of the northern part of the country for power to be trans to move to the north. And that was generally um, very, very, um, you know, widely accepted. You know, it was, there was a, a, a desire for power to shift to the north. And what you are seeing now, and at that time, you would see that PPC collections were very, very high in that part of the country. But what we are seeing now, we are seeing a reverse of that, just the opposite, whereby registration figures are actually higher in the southern parts of the country. You understand? And that also shows you that um, probably um, there is a yearning, you know, for parts of um, the southern part of the country for maybe power to shift back or for a change. So it's very, very clear the trends are showing that as we speak now. I don't know, a lot of time is still available for registration, but what we can see for now is that that is the trend. And if it continues this way, then definitely what it means is that um, the larger increase of the, of the in rate of increase of registration is higher in the southern part than the northern part, which also means that um, there is more uh, interest in changing the status quo from the southern part than from the northern part. And that was exactly the reverse situation we had in 2015. So we are, we are seeing a reverse situation in 2019 as we speak right now. If you are, if means, you are talking about uh, uh, election figures and voter figures, uh, the northern uh, region of the country seems to be favored in times of, uh, if you look at the, uh, the six big states in the country, uh, and you look at the voter figures, you will discover that Kano, uh, Bauchi State, uh, uh, Kaduna State, uh, the, the domination of some big northern state as uh, compared to uh, Rivers and uh, 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 Lagos State and perhaps Oyo State where we have bigger figures also. There seems to be more figures in the northern region of the country. Tell us, for anyone to be president of Nigeria, which of these states should a person be considering more energy or putting more energy into? Right, so you are going to look at, you know, what you need to win. Of course, there is what the law says about 24 states and all of that.
of that. But if you look at it in the area of probability, or you are trying to look at it uh, as someone as an analyst, what is important is to identify the states that you can have, once you win them, can give you an unassailable lead. So for example, if you are able to, like what happened in 2015, where the same candidate won Lagos and Kano, though he lost Rivers, but he won Lagos and Kano. Once you win Lagos and Kano, already you have lost one more or less almost a geopolitical zone in another place, you know, because the two populations is over 10 million. All right. Right? So, All right. so, so that's very, very important to win the states that have the larger populations. But at the same time, apart from that, what is most important is not the registrations, but the PVC collections. Now, in All right. Uh, we, we, we need to, uh, Mr. Ajola, I most really thank you for your time and some of the issues that you have brought up to enlighten our viewers tonight. It's an enlightenment uh, Friday for a lot of our viewers and a lot of lessons to be learned from all of this that you need to go out and collect your permanent voter card. Not only now for you to register, you need to get those permanent voter cards out so that you can vote in 2019. Well, that's how far we can go on the program tonight. Not as much as we wanted to give you tonight because one of our guests is stuck in traffic tonight. Well, Ms. Ajijala, uh, thank you so much for your time on the program. And that's our show for today. Many thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Shumaki Malay. Bye-bye.